Thank you. Okay. Um, many thanks for coming back. I am loving the lively energy in the room. Um, thanks for thanks to our amazing panelists, provocators. Um, and we'll invite you to continue the conversation afterwards, maybe outside to the theater. So for sake of time, because we do have to end um, at the planned time, so uh, we will just move on with our next artist provocation. So it is my pleasure to introduce you to Emmanuel Huyn. Um, yes. Emmanuel, um, whose bio you can find in the program, currently head of dance and performance au Beaux-Arts in Paris. Um, and Tara Lorenzen, um, who is dance director, director of the dance program at Bard College, amongst others, both um, fantastic dancers, makers, choreographers. So thank you. Is this on? Oh. Thank you for um, remaining here because it has been a long day. And I have to say that I'm very impressed and happy to be here because there are lots of uh, uh, levels and of different of friends from America and from France and it's really it goes from my whole life of uh, as a dancer like uh, Irene Ultman being uh, one of my teachers and uh, yeah many people and people will recognize themselves of course or peers like Anne Coulou also so I'm touched and the thing also is that we heard, the both of us, so many things, so many interesting things, that it's a bit heavy to, to now talk, you know? So we, we talked to, told to each other that we want to make it simple, simple for us, because we could, let's say, comment or try to answer to all that, all what, what was developed and very strongly developed. So, yeah, we just, we would try to survive this. <laughs> strong emotional and, and artistical and pedagogical moment, but uh, we try also to to be precise and, and maybe to make some issues uh, for us today in our different positions, uh, relevant or understood. So um, just to describe where I am now, I am in Beaux-Arts de Paris, which is an art, a visual art school. It's my sixth year there, and the, the position was created uh, was created, they, they were looking for a, a dancer, a performer, and a choreographer. So they, they did three names, they, they, they did put the three names in order to find someone. And I would say that I think I was chosen because I was a dancer, a choreographer, and someone who also had um, led the national dance school in Angers. Um, before Noé, of course, and before Robert Swinston, who stayed a few years after me. So I think that's also, I have the feeling it was a reason to choose someone who could think globally um, education. And before uh, Beaux-Arts School, just to, to, to clarify also, after Angers, which was 2004 until 2012, I was hired by a national architecture school in Nantes, where, where I did love, adore, to learn so much. I was not understanding the vocabulary. And I was teaching to those people, physically and also not theoretically, but I was giving examples of uh, strong revolutions in between in our field, connected to architecture or space or landscape or whatever but I had to learn to understand what they were talking about themselves so I'm just finishing by saying the more I age <laughs> it's getting worse and worse the more I love uh, learning so I'm staying in teaching positions because I want to learn <laughs> and that's where I am now in, in Beaux-Arts learning a lot and trying to learn to the people through body what they want to do, which I don't know. 
and they don't know neither. So I love the fact of processing with people who don't know and me neither. Of course, I know things that I can. So movement breaks the knots of the thought through moving together. Sorry, bit long introduction. Not at all. <laughs> I could listen to it all day. Um, it's quite an honor to sit next to this woman. Um, she's a brilliant artist. She's a brilliant dancer. And she's a brilliant creative administrator. Um, so for many, many years, uh, I've been in conversation with Emmanuel, unofficially. Um, so it's, it's been nice over the years to actually meet and talk in New York, but also in France. Um, I also want to say there are many teachers in this room, um, officially teachers, uh, artist teachers, uh, citizens. And so it's, it's a great privilege to speak um, in front of all you and all of you, and I will call on many of you to help me with this because um, I am I'm not necessarily a choreographer. I'm a collaborator. That's where my heart is at Bard College, where I'm the program director as well as a visiting associate um, professor of dance. I came to Bard in a not very conventional way. I don't have an MFA. Um, but I did uh, work with Merce Cunningham for many years as um, part of the repertory understudy group. Um, we created Ice Space together, and it was a pivotal moment, not only uh, working with Merce, but also being part of the studio, which Nicole Bloom can talk to also. It was not the Merce Cunningham School and Company, it was the Merce Cunningham Studio. Um, in, in, in that space, I really did interact. They had a really fantastic visa program. So I got to meet students from all over the world that were attracted to Merce's work. Um, and then from there, I uh, left Merce and had kind of a, a moment of what do I do now? And I became a waitress at Suen. I don't know if anybody remembers Suen. <laughs> Um, a macrobiotic Japanese restaurant on 13th Street, also a Spring Street location. Um, and I have to say, it, you know, it, it was also one of those moments, like my time with Merce. I met a lot of people with a lot of different needs, dietary restrictions. But it's also where I, you know, saw Christopher Williams for the first time and he was like, what do you, do you need a, do you want to do a project? And I was like, yeah, and here's your kale salad. Um, <laughs> so, but it taught me to hustle and it taught me to keep moving and it taught me to interact with people who speak different languages um, and to how, how do we, how do we deliver this show under a lot of stress with food? Uh, with a lot of different cultural backgrounds. How do we do this? Um, and then from there, I uh, worked with Kim Bartosik, who might still be here, who um, was also um, a great teacher of mine and worked with Merce. Um, so we shared a, and that's where I met Cedric Andrieu, um, as well as Daniel Squire and Darius Swan, and they, they helped me through a time. Um, all the while I was auditioning for Trisha, over and over and over again. Um, Irene was there, um, but it was okay, like, because I knew I could keep going back. Um, and then it, uh, I, I started working with Stephen Petronio, who was a protege of um, Trisha's, her first male dancer, am I right? Yeah. Um, very different work, um, but there is a, a, a ferociousness to it that really was a, a, a nice bridge, actually, from Cunningham to Trisha was through this other, other voice, um, and then I got the job with Trisha, um, and so I had to leave Stephen, who is now my neighbor in the Catskills, actually, <laughs> um, and that changed everything. I finally... I, I finally got it, um, and I, um, we can get into that later, but Trisha brought me to France. Trisha brought me to France. Trisha brought me to Hong Kong, 
and Trisha brought me all over the world, and that was something that was really important to me, and through that is how I got into my teaching practice. And with Merce, there was always a teaching practice, um, but it was more games-based and, and cage uh, chance mechanisms with, with children, which is really where the education starts. Um, and then, yeah, so I was with Trisha for many years and, and went to Bard through a partnership that was created with Maria Simpson and Janet Wong through the Bill T. Jones partnership. Um, uh, and then after the Bill T. Jones partnership with the dance program, Trisha came and that's how, and I just stayed and I solved lots of problems um, in, within a, a small liberal arts, um, as you can imagine, sabbaticals happen, emergencies happen, and um, what's wonderful about BART is that in the faculty we share the curriculum, all of us teach technique, all of us teach comp, all of us teach dance history, and we're quite a, um, we are an international faculty. Um, Suleiman Badalo from Burkina Faso, Yavel Gallegos from Mexico, Maria Simpson, who specializes in ballet and anatomy, and myself. Um, and the fifth partner in this uh, faculty is now Villa Albertine. So through Villa Albertine, we are able to bring new international um, scholars. Um, Marcella Santander is with us this semester, as well as Volmir Cordeo. Um, and we can talk more about that later, because Marcella and Volmir both studied with Emmanuel Hoon. Um, you proposed that I could uh, witness the fact that um, there was an important moment in the 90s that gathered some searchers, dancers, and choreographers. And this, we ended up by being 55. And we were not, we were not from the same aesthetic or from the same kind of dance, it was contemporary dance, although. But um, we had a reaction against uh, a political decision to make, uh, to decentralize the committee that could judge the, could evaluate the, the, the projects and give or not money. So this deconcentration of credits, I don't know, it's really, a, literally translated, déconcentration des crédits, made um, in each region where the Ministry of Culture had representatives, they would have a commission. And at that time, we were start, starting our works as choreographers, and we, we heard a lot that what we were doing was not dance. The first piece that I made was in the darkness, and people could not see me, and then people were saying, Oh, she's doing visual art now. She's not dancing anymore. I was dancing naked in the darkness. So of course, people could not see, but it was a first gesture, wanting to clean, wanting to clean the regard and on what was there, and how we look at the things. So, in in my in my situation, we were many that, of course, you might know, like Rachid Ramdan, Loïc Touzé, Boris Charmatz, Ella Fatoumi, Eric Lamoureux, uh, Olivia Granville, Julia Sima, Isabelle Lonnet from Paris 8, Christophe Vavlet, uh, Patrice Barthès. So I'm, I'm naming also uh, Catherine Contour, lots of different people, and people that you, of course, might don't know. But we had the strength and the necessity to gather together to try to answer to this question, why do the people not, do not perceive that we are doing dance or that we are doing art, that we are doing something? So we had really to analyze for four years. One, the rhythm was one, one day a month and one week per summer about, one sub, about the subject first was the tra transmission. Since the people were saying that we were not doing dance anymore, what were we doing? So we had really to analyze where we were coming from. So some of us were coming from, I mean, let's say real schools. Some of them like Rizzo was coming from an art school or Catherine Contour from a, a gardening school. So we had, we've, we worked on that. And then we worked on collegialité, collectif, um, collège, collectif, 
there was a third word about being together. This gave us a strength, and it did. It was a moment of uh, auto formation of us. how how can we transform ourselves ourselves. And maybe the main thing that we did is that, I think for me, uh, regarding the fact that we had to listen to each other, we had to understand what was the point of view of the other, was that if we were making pieces, which were not at that time um, welcome, we should then work, we should do double job, which we should do the piece and we should work on the context of reception of the piece. So it's something that still remains in me, wherever I am. I have to. Do, we have to do the job, but we cannot just do the job. We have to do the job also at the same time. So I think that's that was a very strong moment because of that. That gave me the strength to to apply to direct Angers. and I could really write easily this project because I was full of everyone's, you know, full of all the, the voices of, yeah. And uh, Isabel Lonet in that was very strong also, or Christophe Vavle, because they were writing a lot, we were writing with them. So although I did study philosophy, it was really such a strong help to have theory people with us, you know, also trying to make wider even what we were saying to each other. So writing Angers was in a way for me taking with me the voices of, of my colleagues. And that's really why I tried to, tried to, to lead it. I, I, I asked to some, of, some people of the Signataire du 20 août to be a committee. So this school during nine years has been directed by um, different voices. So visual art, one visual artist, of course dancers, like Loïc Touzé or Sylvain Prunenec, a critic in art, a philosopher, and also the pedagogical director. So, the, and Isabelle uh, from Paris 8, or Julie Perrin, or Isabelle Gino. So, so that the school could not be, could, could never be stable, <laughs> could, should be in crisis all the time. And we were in crisis all the time because we wanted to take feedbacks all the time of the students. So, as you know, we do, we have feedbacks, and we're like, oh my God, oh, it was not so good what we did. So it was really a, a, a very tiring, but so rich moment of all the time, trying to rethink all the time. Yeah, maybe this first thing is important to say, but maybe at the end, what I was aiming, I was trying to understand what I was aiming this morning when I was listening to Raphael or Noé also, and I'm, I'm happy to see Noé also, now doing what he has to do. And, and he was in Angers when we organized schools, which was the, the mother or the father of camping in, uh, in um, CND. When we did organize schools, he was <laughs> with the students of parks. And I remember we were walking to go to eat in the, in the um, somewhere. I mean, all the students and the faculty members. And he came to me, then he was younger. Um, why are you doing that? It was really nice that a student would ask, why are you doing that? I said, why, what? what? <laughs> gathering 12 schools, gathering 12 schools together and faculty members uh, exchanging and students. And I said, yes, it's a bit like what we did with the signataire du 20 août we really have to confront our way of seeing what is pedagogy. We knew that in France since the 2000s, things had been changed very much more international. So I'm just saying that because I was so happy to, to, it was such a cycle that this young guy arrived after having thought, why are you doing that? Yeah. And he's doing something very personal also there. Um, Maybe what is linking us, uh, apparently uh, in an easy way, is that my own curiosity uh, made me ask to Trisha Brown during uh, 12 years, I think, questions. And she was okay to answer to my questions because 
I was not asking the same questions than journalists. And there was a dancer admiring so much her work and the dancers that are here. And so 12 years of interview and interviews. And maybe the main thing which I still have in mind, which I think I'm going on myself, is that she was telling me that I was asking her things about the cycles of her work. Uh, cycle vaillant, instabilité moléculaire, all those incredible things. And then she said, you know, I just hate to do what I know. And I felt immediately after my first piece that I was already, maybe for the second one, thinking in the same way. And I was like, oh my God, I'm done. You know, I did one piece, I'm dead already. <laughs> because of um, maybe thinking again in the same way. So Trisha has been, for many things, um, a mentor or, or someone, yeah, uh, a strong woman, but mainly, I think, because she was wild for me in the way that she didn't want to step where she already stood. And in this way, I think I'm a bit instable like that, yeah. in the way that, okay, I love teaching to dancers. I've been, I mean, really devoted for nine years, sleeping really few, and working like hell. I did adore it. But being in an architecture school has also made me unstable. And being in a visual arts school, I love the fact that I am in a minor position where the major is sculpture, painting, uh, installation. But the fact of being the movement, the body as a medium, or the body as a point of view, I love this situation because it makes tremble everyone, meaning the people who are in my studio and the school. And mainly because they see a group, and that's dance also. Dance, we, we practice together. We move together, I teach things, physical things, or not physical things, or invite people, but we do work together. And that's a big difference, because in the other atelier, teachers pass by to look at the work of their students, and they make sometimes global meetings, but they don't formally teach or be with them in an attitude of research at the same level. And in dance, we do that all the time through the movement or through what we, improvisations, research, questions. So the fact that there is a dance atelier in this visual arts school changes the school in the way that there is a community who is performing the fact of being together. The fact of we are together, although we are different, although there are the first, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth year in each atelier. So. Dance is so active in many ways, the fact of just being together. And maybe saying a last thing before we can exchange again about how Trisha allows us to be, or allow, although I think she was not an easy person or the very hierarchical company that was her company, it was, was also, I think, heavy. I could not have attended to such a fun functionement. But um, for me, being a dancer is wider than being a dancer. <laughs> I mean that I do dance to be able to understand the world or to heal sometimes or to help. So again, I, I'd, lo I'd love to say that since the, the the, the 7th of October and the 22nd of February, the wars of this year, the COVID, I think the shift is so strong for everyone that it's impossible just to think dance as a dance, as dance. So what I'm trying to, to share is that um, dance is working or making dance is is uh, addressing to the city, to the society, to the architecture, but wider, wider to, than our field that I love. 
but it's not for me a closed field. It's a field that is trying to think the life. So I'm trying to really be with students in this spirit. So I would ask you, because you've been going through lots of dance, also dances or companies that I didn't know. So what do you think you were allowed to? Um, let's say meeting someone like Trisha, because it's our common, let's say, the beginning of our talk was that. So, yeah, where did she allow you? For me, it was to step aside from myself <laughs> and to be suspicious. Yeah. Well, she's very suspicious. Um, I, and again, I... I um, hmm. I spent some time with Anne Colo this week up at PS21 in Chatham. Elena Sienko, where are you? Thank you for organizing that. Um, and I had, a, I'm, I will answer your question. I had the opportunity to spend some time with Lisa Nelson. And this is a person that had a significant, um, again, <laughs> uh, effect on me, but uh, through writings, right? There's not that much out there about Lee. And she's a bit of a recluse, no? Um, and her work with Steve Paxton. So it was a very special moment. Um, and I wanted to be very careful about it. Um, and so we were talking about um, Steve Paxton and that he was one of these dancers that got to experience Trisha immerse as a young person while they were young and how that influenced him and therefore a lot of other people. And then I got to kind of experience them at, the, at, at a different period in their life. Still making, still dedicated to making. Both Merce and Trisha were very dedicated to making, but there were hurdles but it still was had to be done. And I think that's something that I really carry with me every time I walk into the studio with the students, uh, whether it's ballet, Cunningham, Trisha, comp, dance history, I have to land the plane. And sometimes I have to land the plane. Um, en français, I don't know how to translate that, but, but there's, there's a great responsibility when you walk in that room. And you might not, Donna Faye, you might know this too, you might not have all the answers for that class, but you, you turn to them to help you land that plane. And I think that's something that both Trisha and Merce, uh, you know, Trisha went to Mills to teach and she was like, I don't think so, thank you very much. <laughs> The academy, the academic bureaucracy, it can really, I mean, Will probably knows this too, like it can as an artist and a dancer kind of, it can get heavy. You probably know this too, Stephanie. Um, so kind of referring back to Trisha and Merce um, and all the other teachers I have in this room, like you just gotta, you gotta deliver something. You have to deliver an experience. It's a deep responsibility. It's a deep, um, to not only the teachers that I've had, but to the next generation of teachers. Linda put it so beautifully, each dancer, what was it? Every dancer is a school. And something that you created that then is now at CND Camping that I get to experience this extraordinary program where I get to work with her students at Beaux-Arts and she may work with Bard students or you art students. I got to watch Linda in action. I got to watch Linda teach a class. And for a teacher and a dancer to experience that is quite a gift. And it's not something that happens very often. Um, so thank you. Um, and I don't, we, there's so many people I've been talking to today that could add to this conversation. Um, but yeah. Um. I would like to give an example where the work is located at the moment, and it has to do with um, Villa Albertine. Um, the former person here, um, before and before Diane, was Sophie Claudel. And at one point, she wanted to invent 
a carte blanche, a program, to free her own team to be all the time answering to the needs, the same needs to <laughs> dancers who are coming to perform or other arts. And also to make the dancers um, or the artists, because it was not only a, a dance program, to make, to, to make the artists work with the city. We were not working with the city anymore, she was saying. She was regret, reti, regretting it and saying, you just come to perform and you go back. I said, but yes, but uh, what else? And then she, she invented a, a program where we could um, come two times, try to understand it was luxurious, luxury to be able to come two times. And um, I started then to think wider than dance. It really helped me to speak wider, or to, to think wider, because I had to think to this extraordinary um, city where uh, postmodernism started. So I knew that the architecture of New York did inspire Patricia or Deborah Hay, or I mean, Deborah was somewhere else, but it did like Yvonne also. So the, the Judson Church people works were also linked to the architecture or the city itself. So I started to think, okay, I'm going to do a research on the places that free those people. They wanted to free dance from the theater. So let's study that. And after a while I thought, my God, I'm, I'm going to go back to the people that I love, you know, that I already invited in Angers. I should, I should make it wider for me. So I thought, let's work with the citizens. And um, it started by investigation of people who, are, who were practicing their, their city, like a taxi driver, like an architect, and like monuments that are in the city. I'm not going to describe the whole thing, but this first step that Sophie offered me was like investigation, uh, questions about the relationship that everyone has with space, the space where he lives or she lives, the space where he or she works, and, and the city by itself. Then it gave, uh, I invited Jocelyn Cotoncin, uh, visual art, visual art, uh, visual artist. Sorry, to to films to film with me what the people were talking about and also movements of those people in the places they were talking about. And the result of that are movies where we see the people talking, moving in the space they are talking about, talking about their work, talking about how they. This, this taxi driver was practicing the city through his uh, car, how he was knowing things by heart, how this architect was only talking about ar architecture, never massaging the architecture, never touching the architecture. So it gave us, it gave me, it gave us another way, I mean, a new way to think what dance or movies could be in between poetry and um, investigation and dance and also um, learning lots of things. So after that, since I wanted to establish in Saint-Nazaire, which is a harbor, and I didn't understand why exactly, but there was those big shipyards um, places. I think I was fascinated by the work that we could see from far. We did two years of immersion in this harbor and made also a portrait. And um, Ashley De Hoyos, who just asked a question this morning about the fact that uh, art was taking care of um, artists and real life, did invite Jocelyn Cotoncin and me to make a portrait of the city of Houston. And that's why I'm here. I'm on my way to Houston. And we are going to create next week um, this film and the performance that will activate this. And I just want to share how methodology there. Each portrait is different, of course, and we are always taught by what we, <laughs> by what we do. So since we understood that um, Houston was a young city, 
we, we asked to inhabitants, some inhabitants, what was the city of New York, uh, the city of Houston before being Houston? How did Houston become Houston? What was the creation time, 1837? And how is Houston now? And maybe what would be the movement, that physical movement that could qualify Houston? So interviewing some people like that, we have so many different uh, versions of what Houston is. This is just crazy. Of course, we, we interviewed the mayor's team who was performing Vietnamese woman, um, Afro-American man, uh, Hispanic person. They're performing the fact that Houston is the most open city and the new model of United States. We did an, this, the answer to those three questions. One entrepreneur who did make his money and his family from oil. Um, three, two or three, two or three artists who are either Mexicans, either American from there. And we had also to meet this uh, Lipan Apache woman. And we learned, we understood <laughs> that this very strong truth that there is place for everyone in Houston. Everyone has his or her chance. But it was set, it was sitting on the fact that the First Nation had to leave. So it was so, again, so strong to be, to be in front of really strong realities for everyone. It is true that this Lipan Apache had to leave or their parent, her parents. It is true that she had to buy again um, lands to be able to bring Buffalo back here and to transmit the fact to the younger generation of Ap Apache that Buffaloes are partners in life, that nature is a partner in life. But everyone has his or her own way, which is true, to understand what is her and his city. So it's called lands, land on plural, because, because we're talking about the same lands, which has a very strong different meaning or history even. Oh my God, <laughs> really? <laughs> We have, um, we have a sign that we are almost done. Um. <laughs> well, I'm now an archaeologist of dance, I feel like it's, it's really interesting to see. I have written down, you know, philosopher, lighting designer, uh, visual artist. It, it just, it keeps evolving, and I think that's what's... Oh, okay. I should probably use this, but should we open it up? Does anybody have any questions? Yes, Irene. Do you want this? Yeah. Uh, Josh had organized at Wesleyan a big um, creative um, opportunity for a lot of things to happen, and he was showing Sky Map up on the stage and I was supposed to go up and talk about it. So I contacted the office, the archives, I got a whole bunch of papers sent to me. And <clears throat> unfortunately I've never, it never materialized, I couldn't go up. But I, in amongst those papers, it said that, you know, Trisha uh, was pregnant or right after she gave birth to her son, she couldn't dance. So she said to all her friends, send me scores and it was one man, this is mid-60s, so it was one man that sent a little postcard, I can't remember his name, uh, from France and say, this is a dance because I say it is. So, <laughs> so she really uh, took that to heart. And then she had, there was another score that I absolutely loved. The name was Olivia or something, it was some a female name. And it consisted in Trisha dressed in a dress, a big hat, had a big Afghan dog that was named Olivia, walking for half an hour down the street, smiling, just smiling. And she said she did that because she wants somebody, all who saw her, would then tell their friends about this woman smiling on the street. And that would tell their friends of smiling on the street. So her work would be spread through, <laughs> through the streets. <laughs> and I just thought that was like so lovely. So I wanted to share that and give that to you. Dancing in the dark. 
Maybe making a, a last link to uh, the issue of residences. Lens was possible to make because we were invited by Diverse Works, which is a, a visual arts center. And also because the curator that asked her to do this, uh, who, who offered to do a portrait of the city of, the, of Houston, Ashley de Hoyos, has been deeply um, interested herself and committed in the fact of making possible the fact of uh, going th um, following the bayou, um, wanting to, to, meet, um, to, to meet First Nations. So she was, the resources were so various, which was not, I mean, yeah, which was not a, a, a dance or visual art thing, but the, the, the need were absolutely heard. So, that made possible the fact of um, of meeting, inventing, and and daring. So, thanks a lot to to this program, but thanks a lot to <laughs> this curator. I have to say. I think on that note of residencies too, I just want to thank again Villa Albertine, Diane, Louise, and especially Nicole for creating this partnership. It took years to kind of get it going, an international partnership with a small liberal arts college is um, no easy task, but I've learned a lot about J-1 visas. Um, I've worked a lot with the International Office of the Scholars. Um, and also it's just been wonderful to invite international um, artists to the campus and then that there's so much that happens from from that the, across departments um, also there's so much happening in the Hudson Valley right now with PS 21 Kotspan, U Albany Tatiana is coming to Bard on Tuesday as uh, through a, our relationship with U Albany to teach um, so if anybody's up there and and then, oh my gosh, Ash Impact, of course, of course. Catskill Mountain Foundation, there's a, there's a lot. So if you find yourself in the Hudson Valley, let us know. Yeah, Nicole, do you want to say something? Hi, everyone. Yes. Here. Woo. Yeah. 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 And maybe a last thank you that we already said, but Ashley de Hoyos came to Jocelyn and I because Nicole was making this, those threads. That's so that's right. also very important to have right. someone who knows so deeply, so deeply the art world in France and here to really so, so, coudre, to things like that. So, of course, <laughs> thanks to you. <laughs> and just to say, Juan Jiru said the same thing. Juan Jiru said, you, you, your dance is in all of us. <laughs> <laughs> the dance is in all of us. It's a beautiful place to pause. Um, I want to thank you both, um, Taha Emmanuel, but everyone who has presented today. Um, yes, I won't attempt to, you know, summarize and un unpack any of it tonight. Just leave all of those. Um, rich and dance lines, um, dancing together. I hope you come back tomorrow morning. We will start at 10 a.m. with Will Rawls here present and Dorothy Mianeza. So please arrive on time um, and we shall continue the conversation uh, tomorrow. So thank you very much uh, for being with us. Thank you.